Welcome. I'm going to read one of my note cards. For those of you that follow me closely on my social media sites like Instagram stories here on YouTube, you're familiar with my note cards and the workshop on living a mastery life that goes through or covers my note cards. I also have a video that I shared recently where I explained or walked you through what deems something worthy to be on one of my note cards. I'll have that video linked in the description box below this video, but welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Tracy Hensel. I'm a certified professional coach and ICF credential holder. I help people just like you optimize your life, whatever that looks like for you. Check me out on my uh, personal brand website as well as my coaching and consulting website. People never do anything once. We are compulsive animals. We continually repeat the same behavior. It's compulsive. We fall into the same patterns. It's something deep within us and often can be traced to something in our childhood. We have patterns that we can't control. Everyone around you has patterns they can't control. There's something, there's simply something very ingrained in their character where they cannot control this pattern. They're hardwired. You want to have the ability to assess it, not only in others, but in yourself. Thank you, Robert Greene, the author for these wise words. Since writing this note card several months ago, I've really reflected on this message. I've really reflected on where I'm compulsive. I've also learned the ability or am working at learning the ability to assess it in others. And I have picked up on compulsions in certain people that I know well. So this all makes perfect sense. And it's been difficult because it's been really crystal clear with my deep personal work where I'm compulsive. And this nails it. I am hardwired and I will default to those patterns, often what you would call climbing down the rabbit hole maybe. We all have them. You have patterns, you're compulsive in certain areas, and so am I. And you want to be able to identify where your compulsions lie and maybe even consider digging really deep to see how they're rooted to something within your childhood, in your upbringing. Well, it is interesting because just in the last week, I've had two of my clients share similar stories about their compulsions, but not really realizing that they're hardwired and they're compulsive in this way. Both of the stories that my clients shared with me had something to do with stumbling across something from their past. One client was recently given a, um, like a keepsake box from her childhood, from her mother. Her mother gave that to her. We've done the same when our girls move out of the house and they're kind of established and on their own and settled in, in a pretty, um, in an, in, in a place where they're, they're not moving around a lot and they have the space to have their keepsakes. We give them their keepsake tubs and it's theirs to go through and they can decide what they want to keep and what they want to purge. So my one particular client stumbled across her diary that she had entries in even in her, her teen years. And she decided to read back through her diary and read some of those entries. And she shared with me in coaching, Tracy, 
it was amazing because what I read that wasn't serving me back then and the things that I did and how I had shame and regret afterwards, I'm still doing those today. <laughs> and she's in her 50s. I'm still doing those same things today. Yes. Yes, because you're compulsive in that way. You're hardwired in that way. That is the pattern that you will default to. We all have them. You want to assess it. You want to recognize it. Because at the end of the day, we can plug along and we can be doing great at executing and achieving a goal, but we're hardwired and compulsive and that's what we will default to. This shows up often with eating. If you think back, you're still doing today what you did then and you weren't happy with it then and you're not happy with it now and 10 years from now, you're still not going to be happy, right? Because you're still hardwired. You're still compulsive in that way and that's the pattern you will default to. And yes, you may pop out of that pattern because you have a burst of motivation or energy or you're working towards something that's keeping you motivated. But at the end of the day, that's where you're going to resort to because you're hardwired and you're compulsive. And then a few days later, I have a client who shared the same thing. She basically stumbled across some old journals that she used to take notes in about her weight, her eating, her exercise. And she said, I can't believe what I read. I mean, I can, but I can't. She said, basically what I read, I'm still doing today. And I said, of course you are, because we're compulsive animals. We're hardwired to do those things. Now you're aware of it. So while she felt defeated, both of these clients of mine both felt defeated in what they found about themselves, but you can use that as a tool. You can see the opportunity in what you just found out about yourself that really, if you were really paying attention and practicing awareness, you would have already known about yourself. But use it as a tool. My one client said she took those, those journals and threw them, took them right to, the, right to the trash, got rid of them. Well, you can't escape where you're compulsive. So that's fine that you got rid of them. They probably don't serve you a purpose today. Who knows? I don't have that answer. But the important thing is, is that you look at them and the fact that you were in that place at that time, reading that for a reason. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> right? Thank you for your divine work and divine mercy. Because you can use this as an opportunity to learn to grow because now you just learn something about yourself, about your compulsions, about how you're hardwired. The big question, the big hairy audacious question is always the same. What do I do about it? What do I do about it? How do I fix it? How do I correct it? Yeah. <laughs> If only we all had that answer, right? If only we all had that answer. Well, everything always starts with awareness. So now we're all aware. We're all aware. If you're watching this video, you're aware. So what do you take with the opportunity of now being aware that you're compulsive? You're compulsive and hardwired and something is deeply rooted and ingrained in you where you default to certain patterns. And everyone's default and pattern is going to look different. For many, it's food. It could be shopping. It could be gambling. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It can be anything. What you want to do is assess it in yourself, but you also want to assess it in other people because it will paint a picture why maybe loved ones continue to do what they do. It will make more sense and maybe you can have more compassion because you realize that you're the same way. Your poison just may be something different. But the first key in everything is being aware. Being aware that you have this. And if it were easy to fix, wouldn't we all have it nailed and we wouldn't fall into these patterns? But that's not the case. You have to learn the art of coaching yourself through. You have to learn to say, oh, there it is. 
and I can tap into that, but I know that I'm compulsive in that area, so it may be better for me to abstain from that. And that is one of the things that I think about every time I feel triggered to go to the poison for me, to go to the forbidden fruit, whatever that is for me. Because I know that once I get a taste of it, I could easily slip into that pattern because I'm compulsive there. You have to find out what it is for you and you probably know it. Reflect and think about this. Think about 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Are you still doing what you always did? That right there is your chosen poison. That's your forbidden fruit. Quit judging yourself. You're normal. You're natural. It's not that everyone in the world has it and you don't. Everyone is, is plagued to the same thing. It's just we have a different thing that we go to. Know it for you. And then you have to do the deep work and it requires self-coaching or working with a coach. Certainly, I can help a client with this. I can help them to assess it and work towards a goal to overcome it so that 10 years from now, they're not still living the same life. We have to kill that. We have to, we have to remove what once was, but you have to recognize it. And it's not going to be easy because that is what you're going to go to when you're weak, when you're triggered, when your buttons get pushed, when you're stressed, maybe when you're happy, whatever emotion you're feeling. Don't forget, we are responsible for our feelings and what we do with them. But it's not going to be easy. And I don't even have all the answers as your coach, but I will help you find the answers because you do have the answers. They lie within. Let me read another card to you. The disconnect to avoid. Behavior versus values. There's a way I want to live and a way I'm living. And if those are not in harmony, I start to feel bad. You must reconcile that quicker as to avoid that disconnect. So what tools, what tools are you implementing in your life so that you too can do the work, so that you can be reminded daily? What happens, and I see this all the time in coaching, is people do the work when they need it, when they're suffering, when they're when they're, when they're being compulsive and they are going down that rabbit hole, that's when they'll, they'll implement whatever they need. But what you have to do is you need to be doing the work, the studying, the hard work daily, even when you don't need it. So I'm doing it every day, regardless if I need it, regardless if I'm in a vulnerable state, I'm working at it every single day so that it gets hardwired, so that it gets ingrained, so that I can be compulsive in that area. I can be, in compu I can be compulsive in overcoming the challenges that lie ahead. So it's a daily practice that I implement every day, whether I need it or not. So don't wait around until the moment you need it because often you're already over the fence and you're already into whatever's the compulsive nature for you. You're not setting up the parameters. You're not buffering the insurance policy around you and that's what you need to do. Is it going to be easy? No, but we do hard things. Is it going to be worth it? Of course it is. We all know that discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. Discipline, and it's on one of my cards. Look at that. You do hard things. Oh, oh, oh. Trust the process. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. But if you're not doing that practice, that daily practice of coaching yourself, you'll already be over the fence. You'll already taste the forbidden fruit. You'll already go after the poison, whatever it is for you. And that's the art. And that's the art of mastery. That's the art of being a better master of you.
of choosing your heart, of overcoming, of being resilient. But you got to be willing to do the work, even when you don't need it, even on the good days, even on the days you're spot on. Yeah. I'll have some videos and some workshops in the description box below this video to help you to complement this. But I can't do the work for you. You have to build your own toolbox, whatever that looks like for you.